Hello world, it's your boy Metallic Charles with this shiny new Snowball microphone. Just came in literally like an hour ago and it sounds fantastic and looks even better. It sounds so much better than that piece of shit $5 microphone. But anyway, um, I am going to do my first strategies video today and I'm going to talk about spawn systems in this game. And you, you'll notice the little uh, box up in the top right, that is actually an overhead view of the gameplay while it's happening. And it might be tough to see what's going on. You don't really, you just need to really focus on the color, you know, the red versus blue here. Um, let me just go over this gameplay real quick. I do get a mega kill in this gameplay, and it's my very first one, as well as a quad feed. And the quad feed isn't very pretty because it doesn't, it's not very stacked up nicely. It kind of just rolls over. And I, I personally didn't even think it was a quad feed. The game just gave me it. But the, uh, the mega kill is kind of more exciting. It is kind of a slower mega kill, I guess. I didn't think it was a mega kill either, but again, the game, I was pretty surprised the game gave me the mega kill, um, which is pretty cool. And I'll, I'll point these things out when they happen. Um, in fact, I think the mega kill is coming up right here. Let's see, I get this guy with a pistol. He's gone. That's one. Throw some C4. There's two. Let's see, pop some kids. One, there's three, four, five. And then six, full seven, and I think that's the mega kill because I do run up and get one more guy on the front door, and so I'm not sure where that began and ended, but there it is, mega kill. You love it, I love it. <laughs> I think this game. There's a, a game called Unreal Tournament 2004, and any time something awesome would happen, they'd have this this epic announcer tell you about it. This game desperately needs it. He would he would go anytime in the game he'd get like a double kill or triple kill. He'd be like double kill, triple kill, and then to a point, I forget how many kills you'd have to get in a row, but he would just start going, holy shit. And if you ever got that, you felt like a beast. And I think every first person shooter needs that. Anyway, let's talk about some strategy. So the spawning systems, and this is going to hold true for most of the Call of Duties, um, as well as most first person shooters, I think. Um, so the Call of Duty, they use a hierarchical system, um, and the first thing on there is what game type are you playing? And they just want to, you know, they want to make sure that it's fair. It's a fair game. So like this in Hardpoint, the since each Hardpoint will sometimes be closer to one spawn, they want to they flip the spawns to make sure that the same team doesn't get to spawn right next to that Hardpoint and just hold it the whole time. Um, and then for instance like in domination you're gonna spawn nearest the flag you have captured to make you know so the other team can, can hold the other the you know say you're spawning near a flag the other team is gonna be spawning near the, the C flag so they can hold C flag um, and then in de um, demolition you know you're um, the a bomb you're gonna be spawning closer to the a bomb and the enemy team's gonna be spawning closer to the B bomb. Um, however, the A-bomb is usually kind of in the middle, I guess, not so much closer to you than the other team. But the idea is that the B-bomb is going to be the harder one to get. Um, and then, the, you know, Team Deathmatch, it's the since the objective is to kill the other team as well as confirm, they, they just make sure you don't spawn near the enemy. And that that is the second um, thing that they look at in this system is how, what is the proximity of the enemy to you, to that spawn. And so... Like I was just saying, in hardpoint, they flip the spawns. However, say that the the hardpoint is like in the blue room, you're gonna, in if you have your your teammates back behind the blue room, you're gonna continue to spawn back there because you're not gonna spawn an enemy just back there. Um, and I'll show you how to use this later in this game. There, I use this knowledge. But for and then like in domination, um, say you guys have a flag, but all of a sudden the enemy is over there capping a flag. They're going to start spawning you at C flag, unless the enemy is also on C flag, then they're going to start spawning you near the B flag. So that, that's the, the second thing that they consider. Um, and then, you know, I guess in dom or demolition, they don't, the only times that the spawns change is if the enemy is literally on top of your spawn. Like, I think um, the, one of the spawns is back here on the shuffleboard. And, the, you know, if the enemy is back there as well, they're not going to just start spawning you there. They just start spawning you kind of to the sides. Um, the uh, the next thing you, you want to notice is 
that there are certain just spawn areas, um, and I'll draw boxes up there on that top, that top right picture. Uh, there's there's areas where you're gonna spawn, and there's areas where you're just not gonna ever spawn. So mainly you're gonna spawn behind the two houses here and here, um, unless there's the enemies are holding both of those places down. Then you'll just start spawning in the middle, off to the sides, like here and here. Um, but you're never going to spawn like in the second story of the house um, or in the middle like in that trailer so you know and this holds true for all the other game or, um, game maps there, there are certain spawning areas some of them and some of the larger maps might be larger spawn areas one way that you can use this knowledge too is you can have your team hold down a couple of these spawning areas and so you you can easily predict where the enemies can be coming from so like in hardpoint like I said you can hold down one of the, the spawns in the back behind a hardpoint um, and, and your team is gonna be able to hold that hardpoint so much easier because they're gonna be right next to it even in demolition you can go down and hold down the enemy spawn near B so they won't spawn near B and your team will be able to easily plant the bomb there in fact I think right here actually use yeah so I've got this sentry gun I'm gonna go put this in front of the building the hard points right in this room right here and then I'm gonna go back on the shuffleboard and hold down this spawn so now my team is gonna continue to spawn back here because I am back here and you know I happen to have this sentry gun which is, works out perfectly because now I can just con control it and now I'm effectively holding down the front of the building as well as the back of the building and this, you know, this is this is a perfect way to use this knowledge. Um, but then, like in domination, you can make sure that one team, you know, you can hold down the A flag and the B flag. The team is gonna, the enemy team is gonna continue to spawn behind the C flag, and that's why, that's why I think triple capping is a bad idea. Is because then they just start spawning off to the sides near the B flag usually. And they're that or they're it depends on where your team is, I guess, when you triple cap. They just start spawning all over the place though, the enemy does. And so it makes it harder for your team to to win, really. I mean, because you're the enemy is gonna be coming from all directions all of a sudden. Um and then, you know, another way to use this knowledge is you'll be able to predict where your enemy is gonna be coming from. And that'll help you so much when you're running around. I mean, if you can have if you get the drop on your enemy in this game you can pretty much kill them. I mean, that's most of what this game is about, is just getting getting the first shot on somebody, um, especially if you're an accurate shooter, and especially for sniping, because sniping is all about predicting where your enemy is going to be. Um, you're already, already at such a disadvantage of having pretty much one bullet, um, unless you like to SVU spam, that is. <laughs> but if, I mean, with these bolt-action rifles, since they are pretty much one shot, one kill, um, I know the hitboxes are kind of small, but and nonetheless, knowing where he's going to be coming from and you being able to get that drop on that person it will will help you. you it'll give you such more of an advantage. Um, and then, like I said, if you can work with your team and have you know situate yourselves. Um, to the, your best advantage. Oh, here's my quad feed. There's two people right there. There's third, and then the fourth guy's right there. I, you know, it, it really, I didn't think it was a quad feed, but the game goes to me, so that's cool. But yeah, if you can work with your team and have them all, you know, kind of situate themselves to uh, not, not so much spawn trap somebody, like where you're just picking them off the spawn, but knowing that they're going to continue to spawn there. It really, really helps. And if you don't know where the spawns are on a, on a map, one of the easiest ways to, uh, to to just kind of guess where they might be is look at where the bulk of your team is. It's wherever they are, then the enemy is probably going to be spawning like across the the level opposite of that. So yeah, I hope all this really helps you and improves your gameplay. Um, this is your boy Metallic Charles, and I'm out.